Keith Gowing is editor of NASAWatch.com. He's an astrobiologist and a former rocket scientist, so the best person to have sitting here. Um, this is a pretty big week, a uh, pretty big year when it comes to space. In fact, when you look back on 2019, it may be this first week where everybody's like, wow, I can't believe what happened. Talk to me about what it's been like watching all of this. Well, this as week. John mentioned, there's the uh, Chinese mission that's going to land on the moon within a few hours. Uh, New Horizons zoomed past Ultima Thule, 4 billion miles away from Earth and from the sun. And when people don't realize this, but just the other day, an American spacecraft, OSIRIS-REx, went into orbit around an asteroid. And it's so small, it's orbiting about a mile and a half from its center, which this thing isn't even a mile wide. And they figured out a way to actually get this thing into orbit. So all these things are happening one after another. So for somebody like me who's going on the air, it's like, which, which mission am I going to talk about? And they're all like, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good news, and we want to see more of it. And yeah, you're not getting much sleep, I no. suspect, either. Uh, talk to me about the, this, this moon mission, because as John was saying, uh, the, the communications, even landing it is kind of tricky, isn't it? I mean, you got to use a satellite. And yeah, it's they actually, back in the Apollo days, they thought of maybe trying to do one of the last missions on the far side of the moon, so they came up with this idea of the satellite. So it's not a new idea, but the Chinese are the first ones to actually go and do it. And so there's a little bit more of an echo, like it takes a second to get to the satellite and another, but you, you work that out. It's like doing an interview with two bounces on a commercial you know, satellite. But in terms of the communications, you still have the different nodes that you have to go through, and uh, you can't really see what the rover is doing because it's on the far side of the moon. You just There's no way that you can really check on that. So uh, all this taken together, and with the skill that the Chinese have shown thus far, I'm, I'm optimistic it'll land exactly as they expect it to. What's the excitement about this? I mean, this is uh, obviously, as you say, it's, an, uh, it's, uh, it's a new frontier, I guess you would say. What's, what's interesting about this? I mean, will it tell us a little bit more about the moon? I mean, what do you find fascinating about well, it? Well, there's a lot of things about this. As John mentioned, it's a lot of geology is going to be done. This uh, landing site in the Aiken Basin is the largest crater on anything anywhere in the solar system. And it may have, as John mentioned, excavated older parts of the lunar crust. But there's some other interesting things too. It's taking a little greenhouse with some plants and some silkworm larvae. Now you may say this is like a science experiment, but symbolically it's an attempt to see, okay, well I've got some plants and animals on the moon. How will they fare while living there? Because we may want to go back to stay. And if we're going to go back to stay, we're going to probably want to grow crops and food and so forth there. So that's overlooked a bit, but that's, I think, important. And also, one of the, the relay satellite that they're going to use to talk to the rover can also do radio astronomy that's really not possible from the Earth because of all the noise we make. So uh, this is a mission that's sort of like a Swiss Army knife. Every time I read something about, oh, my god, this is other experiment they're doing. So, uh, China's taking the greatest advantage possible of this mission, and they're doing it sequentially so that every one of them builds on the next one. And of course, after this, we'll have to sample return missions. But the coolest thing is if you look at the landing stage, it looks like something that could be made bigger and you could put people on top of. To me, that's the exciting thing. Mm -hmm. And they're prompting us here in the States to be thinking, yeah, you know, we really should be going back. Well, going back, that's the interesting thing, because it seemed like uh, for space geeks, uh, Mars was what everybody was talking about recently. Now it seems like the moon's, uh, everybody's enthusiastic about the moon. We were just talking to John about NASA, and of course China has, has plans for putting humans on the moon again. Uh, we've been gone for a long time, uh, it, but there's some level of enthusiasm now that we haven't seen in some time. Yeah, there is. And of course, the question is, is there a space race? I think it's halfway between an actual race and oh, ho hum. I think it's a healthy competition. But it's not just the US and China. Uh, India has sent a probe around the moon. Japan has sent one there. The Russians have sent their own unmanned missions, and they're thinking of going back. Uh, others have, and there's a commercial mission that Israel's going to be launching that'll land on the moon. So uh, the free, and of course Elon Musk is going to send a whole bunch of tourists around the moon in a couple of years. So it's sort of like that song back in the '60s, everyone's going back, going on to the moon. Uh, uh, that's actually happening okay. as we speak. Well, we better talk to you while we can before you go off on Elon's little mission. Uh, Keith, oh, great to see was. you. Thank you so much.